and roll. Here we go. Orphans, ladies and gentlemen, welcome along to another review from us. This time it is the third generation, the latest generation Kubota M7 series tractor. And I think if memory serves me well, it was originally launched in about 2014, obviously with the first generation M7. And since then, like all products, it's had the uh, various updates along the way, often driven uh, by emissions these days, so it now meets stage five, but along with that, they've uh, refined a few things, and it's got a few extra features as well, which we're gonna talk about in this review as we go along. So, quick overview of the uh, M7 series range, three models in there. They range from about 130 horse to uh, 170 horse. Uh, our particular model is the M7173 Premium KVT. So the KVT is the continuously variable transmission model, which, uh, like I said, this one is. Uh, with this model, it's rated to about 170 horse uh, and gets about, I think it's a 5 horsepower boost. Uh, whereas the two smaller models in the range, they receive a 20 horsepower boost. Now, depending on where you're watching this, if you are watching it on one of our social media platforms, uh, as ever with our, a lot of our reviews, this review will probably run out in a few minutes. So to get the full review, please do so. Go and head on over to that there, landpowertv.com. You'll get the absolute full fat review. No adverts either as well, spoiling the party. And we also put all the specs uh, with the video review there on that uh, landpowertv.com and we'll also probably put a link to the manufacturer's site as well if you want to know a little bit more about this tractor. So without further ado then, let's get stuck into this review. So we'll kick off with a bit of capture and a bit of talk about the environment which we find ourselves in with this Kubota M7 third gen. Uh, I mean, we'll start logically, we'll start with, I mean, access. I mean, access, pretty damn good actually. Nice wide steps on the way in, not a lot to catch your clothing, overalls on on the way up, plenty of grab angles, that kind of thing, and lots of space between the door, the passenger seat, and the uh, the uh, the driver's seat so dead easy to get in and out and once you are on the seat hang on we'll take a little pause there just a sec there is plenty of steering wheel adjustment as well hopefully you can see that uh, just press the pedal on the floor like uh, many uh, tractors these days and like i say you get lots of uh, steering wheel adjustment for you and then added to that there's a nice bit of uh, seat adjustment as well this position that I'm in now, the seat is sl slid all the way back. It would be nice if it could go back a little bit further, but they do have a bracket behind the seat, which serves as uh, it mounts the bracket for the fire extinguisher holder, which is, I think it's mandatory on continental Europe. Uh, and it also houses, well, it is a bracket for the pickup hitch uh, lever, release lever. So unfortunately that does limit a little bit the amount of uh, seat movement from you know forward to back. Speaking of space, I mean there's acres of space, you know, from side to side. It's a big open and airy cab. 
in that respect from side to side. You know, the you know, you've got your main controls here on your right hand side, and then it just all sort of falls away and you feel like you're sort of perched up, you know, kind of surveying your surroundings. And with that, you naturally get pretty good visibility all the way around. And because it's a four cylinder, you've got, you know, a relatively short nose bonnet on there. The mug guards are nice and curved, they just fall away. I've got loads of visibility down to this rear mower on my right hand side. Upwards visibility, there is a little bit of a roof window up there, which does open. It'll probably, you know, it'll help a little bit for some load of work. It, to be honest, it's a little bit of a talking roof window. It, you know, the, you, know you, you sit on some of these other tractors and they've really gone to town with a massive roof window up there. So maybe that could be a little bit bigger. <laughs> but, but the other thing is, you've got this massive, huge uh, sun visor. <laughs> it just swings 180 degrees so it can cover that little roof window there. Or you can bring it down a bit, which, you know, it's nice and simple, actually. I can say, it's huge. Dash-wise, as you may have seen before, that all moves with uh, the steering wheel. So that's always in view. It's nice and big. Uh, the only thing is, I mean, I've got to say, is it's kind of looking a bit slightly dated, you might say. You know, absolutely fair enough. It does everything you want, to be honest. It shows you everything you want. You've got nice big analog dials for your RPM, fuel level and temperature gauge and then you got this uh, just this uh, mono coloured LCD screen in the middle which gives you a little bit more information such as uh, forward speed, uh, the direction you've selected, uh, things like that. Oh and you add blue level as well and the pressure in your air tanks. So you know it's got it all, it's got it all, it's all there, perfectly functional, just looks a midges old fashioned. So on the main armrest then, like I say, it is all your primary controls. Pretty well laid out. Most stuff falls relatively well to hand. Uh, it's pretty clear as to what all the buttons do. They're all pretty well labelled. Uh, I think later on, I think we'll park up for a little bit and just go through a little bit more in depth about what they all do, uh, particularly some of the screen navigation, which I've got it's got to be said, before we even get to that, the navigation of the screen and how it works is brilliant. It's dead simple. But like I say, we'll get to that in another little bit. I think we'll just have to park up for that one because uh, it'll be a lot easier to explain. But as to this layout and actually what it's like to use, I mean, overall the layout's pretty good. I mean, I'm mowing today, so I've got my front mower uh, lift and lower on that axis on this joystick, and I've got my rear mower lift and lower on that axis of the joystick. They're all completely assignable. I'll explain those in a bit, which makes it really user friendly. Um, I would say with things like, if you've got the guidance, you're gonna have to sort of reach down here for that. It's, you know, you've kind of got to steer your way in between a few of the controls just to get at these buttons down here. It would be nice if there was a button on here somewhere, anywhere on this main drive lever. Uh, just, you know, just make it that little bit more convenient really but overall it's all perfectly functional you know it's a bit of a kabota thing you know it's all perfectly functional it's spot on for what it does just maybe just do with a little maybe just a slight rejig of where things are slightly positioned and then another little side note i suppose you could say just the build quality and the way they put everything together in here it's all it's all you know it's all good solid stuff you know this is proper solid it's all good stuff they haven't skimped on that at all i don't think and i think it should stand the test of time i mean correct me if i'm wrong if you've been using m7 for quite a while now chuck it in the comments say oi jim you're talking absolute cobblers or back me up <laughs> one or the other so i think boys and girls that'll do for a little bit of cab chat i think i mean rather than me just keep explaining it i think you know you can see for yourself from these various camera angles you can see what it's like you can see how i'm getting on with it and hopefully you'll pick up a little bit more of a flavor of what the cab's like to live with you know as we go on with this review as i'm talking about engine transmission and various other bits and pieces so for now that'll do for uh, cab talk we shall see 
What else we can find with this tractor? Right, time to talk a little bit about engine and transmission. Uh, 